Hey guys, Fred here at Math and Engineering. We are nearing the end, actually, of our derivative section. Lucky for us. And we're almost done. Hopefully you've understood everything up to this point. And this is kind of the, the point where we show you the shortcut, okay? So we went over, you know, the different rules, quotient rule, power rule, uh, product rule, right? We went through all of those. We did some trig functions. And now I'm going to show you how we can evaluate some of those functions much quicker without having to, for example, use the quotient rule. Uh, we could just do it another way that's, that's much faster. But you do need to know those rules previously, the ones that we discussed, because it may be asked for you on a test to use one of those rules specifically, okay? But if it just says to differentiate and it doesn't say which way, then, then you know, the chain rule most of the time is, is much easier, all right? And we'll do some trickier problems after this, but we'll just go through two very simple ones just so I can show you how it works. So at the top in the pink box, I've written down the definition as we always do. I have uh, big F, so capital F prime of X is equal to F prime of G of X times G prime of X. So as you can see, we have a composite function here, okay? And what this means is that we have an inside function here, okay? We have, we have an inner function. So inside F of X, we have G of X, okay? And then that is going to be times the derivative of G of X. All right, so in a different notation called the Leibniz notation, excuse my pronunciation, okay, this may be a, a different way uh, of proving it, but, you know, it's, it's good to look at this notation as well because this will come up, all right? Uh, so instead of writing uh, F prime of X or, or Y prime, we can write DY by DX, okay? That's a different way of writing the derivative of Y with respect to X, a different way of writing Y prime. So if we say that y is equal to f of u, okay, and u is equal to g of x, so we substitute g of x for u, we can say that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x, okay? And the easy way to, to remember this, okay, is this isn't really considered a quotient, okay? This isn't a fraction, like this isn't u by x divided by x. But if you think of it that way, you, you can remember that the u's will cancel and you'll end up with dy by dx, okay? So that's just kind of a, a good way of remembering this notation here. All right, so uh, I think you'll understand what these definitions mean when we solve these two problems and you'll see exactly how it works, okay? So in the first question, it asks us to differentiate y equals, in brackets, x cubed minus one to the power of 100, all right? So right away, we're gonna look for like the inner function, the inside of the function, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be what's in the brackets, all right? And what, what's in the brackets here is x cubed minus one, okay? So x cubed minus one is kind of going to be our, our g of x, okay? Or it's gonna be our u in, in this notation, all right? So we're gonna pretend that that's u, okay? And we're going to differentiate the function y equals u to the 100, all right? So we're gonna pretend that this inner function for now isn't there. So let's go ahead and start that. So we have, we'll just write dy by dx, okay, is equal to. So we are going to just apply the power rule, okay? And the power rule here is going to be, we're gonna take this 100 and we're gonna bring it down, right? And we're not gonna write u, we'll just write x cubed minus one, that's fine. And we're going to do n minus one on the top, so 100 minus one is to the power of 99, okay? So the next step, okay, is to apply this last part here, which is g prime of x. So now we're going to take the derivative of the inside of the, the, the our, our inner function here, and we're going to take the derivative of that. We're going to multiply it by this function, and that's going to give us our derivative. So it's much more simple than, you know, for example, expanding this out 100 times, which would be impossible. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of x cubed minus 1. So the derivative of x cubed, we'll bring the 3 down, okay? So it's going to be 3x, and then 3 minus 1 is 2 squared. All right. And, well, if we come over here, we have dy by dx is equal to, and if we just multiply this in, we have 300x squared times x cubed minus one to the 99. All right, so as you can see, the chain rule very much simplifies our task of finding a lot of derivatives that would be seemingly impossible without it. So let's go ahead and move to the next one. So as you can see here, we have a quotient, right? We have a, uh, we have a fraction and well, we could use the quotient rule and if, if you wanna go ahead and try the quotient rule, you'll get exactly the same thing as if we use the chain rule. But this is uh, a much quicker way of solving the quotient rule problem by using the chain rule. So let's go ahead and we'll say that this is f of x is equal to, so we'll say that f prime of x using a different notation, all right? 
f prime of x is equal to, and let's go ahead and rewrite, actually, before we do that, let's say that f of x is equal to, let's rewrite this as x squared plus one to the negative one, right? Because as we know, those are equivalent statements there, right? So using the chain rule, let's look for the inner function here, all right? Our inner function is x squared plus one right now, okay? So let's imagine that that's just a single u, and let's take the derivative of that, okay? So we have uh, negative one here, so let's bring that negative one down, okay? And then we have x squared plus one, okay? And then minus one minus one is going to be negative two, all right? And as we did before, we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So we have x squared plus one, right? So the derivative of x squared is two x, and the derivative of one is just, you know, zero, it's a constant. And if we go ahead and simplify that, we should be left with negative two x, okay, we'll just multiply two x by negative one, and then we have x squared plus one to the negative two, and that is our f prime of x. Okay, so, you know, we can go ahead and simplify that further. Okay, we have this uh, x squared plus one term, and that's to the negative two, so we can bring that to the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have f prime of x, okay, is equal to negative two x, right? Because the negative two x isn't uh, included with the negative two, so don't make the mistake of, of bringing this two x down to the bottom, okay? Because that's not the correct answer. That would be very wrong. And we have x squared plus one squared. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've, uh, we've solved that problem as well. Two fairly simple chain rule problems. Now we're gonna do something uh, you know, much trickier in the next video. So stay tuned for that if you wanna practice a little more of these chain rule questions. And uh, thanks for watching this one, guys. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.